What's going on guys? Uh, today is mostly gonna be a photography day, but I uh, have a quick job to do on the floors. A couple of you guys have mentioned that I don't need to be putting a, like a varnish or a coat on the floor, but the packaging for these floors that I bought actually says specifically put this type of coating down on the top at the end. So I actually went to the hardware store ask them what I should do and the guy said it's not necessary to put it down but if it, there's any like imperfections I should lay some down otherwise you know water can seep down and it can create mold or can create problems underneath the surface so I'm actually gonna put a quick layer of something down I actually don't even know what it was he gave me or what it is he gave me I am not good at this stuff as you guys noticed but I'm having fun with it and that's all that matters It's hard to show you on the GoPro, but the coat is down and it was kind of hard because it's clear coat and it's dark in here and it's hard to see what I did and what I didn't do. But I think it came on okay. Honestly, I'm so stoked with how it looks. It looks really, really good in here. And yes, I know the walls look terrible. Uh, I can't be in the basement now because probably there's paint fumes. And also this probably needs about 24 hours to set. So the plan is to go do some photo making. So before I started daily vlogging, you guys might have noticed that there were some really, really bad sensor spots on my camera. It wasn't the vlogging camera, actually, it was my, my photo camera, my EOS R. And it was actually much worse than you guys realized. I'm going to show you right now the Lightroom of what the sensor spots look like. And if you guys didn't know this, on like the spot removal tool in Lightroom, there's a little button on the bottom that says Vis visualize spots. If you click that, it'll actually show your sensor spots. Mine was bad. It looked like an astrophotography photo. It was that bad. It looked like it was snowing. So I have to clean this sensor. When I first got a DSLR, I was terrified to touch the sensor. It's like this really scary thing that's super sensitive. And it is sensitive, so you have to be careful. But for the most part, it's not nearly as scary as you think. I had my cameras professionally, cl professionally clean once. The rest of the times I've just done it myself. You need a clean environment, one where monkey's not currently climbing all over my camera bag, uh, and you probably want to get an, a blower, one of those like puffers that you can blow the air out of. Dry it out first, try to get the dust out that way, and then resort to something like this. These are full frame sensor cleaning swab kits. You can buy these at almost every camera shop or on Amazon or something like that. And I've actually linked this one in the description, not because it's sponsored, because it's not, but because it's what I'm using and I wanted to show you. Um, and then it's actually a really simple process. Go into your camera settings, um, and then obviously every camera is different, but you find where it says cleaning. So in Canon, it's in the yellow mem menus. Um, and then you go to clean manually, you click it, and it's basically just gonna open the mirror on a DSLR or the curtain on a curtained mirrorless camera. And you hold it like this, and you just take the sensor swab and there's wet versions and dry ones. I like to use a wet one first and then a dry one. And then you literally just go into your camera lens and you swipe really gently one way, and then really gently back the other way. And then I'll actually take the dry swab and do it again. So yeah, that's how you clean it. It's really that fast. But I think don't forget that to also clean the inside elements to your lenses because a lot of times you'll have dust there and then you think it's clean here and then you plug this back on and it gets dusty again. So that's what you do. We'll hit off and uh, we got a couple hours until sunset so let's go make a picture. It is so beautiful. 
beautiful out right now after the past couple days of rain this is crazy it's like early november and it's like 20 degrees and sunny this is i'm in shorts and a t-shirt and i'm warm ah oh, this is amazing i parked at Prado do camillo and i'm going for a bit of a hike because it's nice i've got about an hour and a half until sunset and uh yeah i thought i'd go for a bit of a walk just for the record there's lots of beautiful like modern villas out on this point my dream is to someday live somewhere like out here it's probably about a hundred years in the future at this rate from uh, an economics perspective but that's the dream if you're also curious you can get a place like this here right looking towards the beach for around a million million and a half euros so it's expensive for me obviously but it's affordable compared to a lot of places in Europe this is the golf course at Cascade uh, there's a driving range there so if people are like monsters they might be able to hit me and like I said I'm just going for a little bit of a hike because it's blue sky I'm not sure what the photography perspective potential is going to look like but I do want to have a scout around and see what's available if I could pry this life with roses I plant as many as my desires Their thorn would bite And tear the thin cloth we wear I should also mention that we're still like kind of free lockdown wise here in Lagos uh, The way it's going in Portugal is your municipality is assigned either red or green i guess and if you're red it means you have like curfews and then there's some other rules and also you can't leave your municipality but the problem is even though lagos isn't in red yet and it actually looks like it's gonna go red all of the neighboring municipalities are so all the places i normally go to take pictures are red so even though we're not trapped we are kind of trapped so uh, I can't uh, probably leave Lagos for, for two weeks, which is kind of sad, but it's also kind of fun because it means I get to explore a little bit more right around home. And the roof would fall under the weight of fall and polarize the walls. Then the rain would be. You can see uh, the lighthouse, Ponte de Piedad, back that way. Um, I would love to find a place to get a great photo of it and actually from here it's okay but i just wish there was more foreground i'm gonna keep wandering around It's backlit, so I'm not sure how much of a guide this will be able to give you guys, but if you've been watching the channel a lot lately, I kind of want to give you some ideas as to where we are. This is Ponte de Piedad, so Prado, uh, Prado Camillo is right there. Uh, you can see a village or a town way on the horizon past these cliffs. That's actually Prado de Luche. You can walk along these cliffs all the way there. In fact, you can walk along these cliffs all the way to Lisbon. There's a trail that goes all the way there. I was hoping to do it, but because of lockdown, it's impossible. I will do that at some point. Uh, right there is Praia de Manche. That's a really popular one amongst, uh, amongst locals that want to kind of avoid the more touristy ones. And then there's a couple smaller beaches here that you can only access by kayak. I think this is really beautiful, but it's just not super photogenic. I don't think, I don't know. So this is a beach called Praia do Canavale. <laughs> I actually don't know what it's called. I think it's called Praia do Canavale. I don't know. Um, but I thought it was only accessible by boat, but there's like five people on it and I don't see anybody with a kayak. And maybe they hiked along the rocks to get there, I don't know. But I'm gonna keep walking and see if I can get, um, if there's stairs or something. I don't think there is, I mean, it's straight cliff. Time, space, 
than life's barriers and firmament bounds. It's blue. Sure enough, it looks like there's a way down. Now to carry on, carry on, when you need to the ground. To stay a single rose from me, the dreams on top. Well, yeah, so this beach is actually really cool. Uh, there's definitely some potential for some photos, but like blue skies, absolutely bluebird skies. But these rocks are all such a beautiful color that I think they'll actually contrast nice with the sea and then the cliffs there. So I think I'm just gonna try to find a simple foreground, maybe even a reflection for the cliffs and uh, try to keep a minimal sky, so. Let's explore a little bit and hopefully come up with something. Finally decided to Google it and found out that high tide's actually in an hour. So I don't know how much of this beach is still gonna show at sunset which is in about a half an hour but i'm trying to focus on something that i'm really bad at it's easy in photography to focus on what you're really good at because it's exciting but i'm really bad at details and i'm really bad at showing those like really beautiful elements within our nature the smaller details so i've been focusing on trying to capture some of these smaller rocks with a slightly longer exposure playing with a polarizer playing with some shadows I don't know if any of them are good because it's really hard to tell on the tiny little screen, but uh, I'm going to share one or two of them with you now. The settings were pretty simple. I think most of them will be about a half a second, but as usual, the settings are on the side. Hey, it's literally, I don't know, maybe a minute until sunset. And honestly, I'm kind of struggling. You guys know I'm a little bit OCD with my foreground elements. I've been walking up and down this beach for the past 25 minutes, trying to find something that was balanced, maybe followed the rule of odds, wasn't too obtusely positioned, and I haven't found anything. So instead, with literally the last bit of light catching these rocks, I've just stopped at the last place I've stood. The rocks are okay, whoa! Woo. <laughs> the rocks are okay, uh, but I'm really struggling with the exposure. I don't know how long I want this exposure to be. Do I want it to be a half second, which I normally go with? Do I want it to be really fast? Or do I want to go like 30 seconds? I just don't know. All I know is the sea is starting to get a little bit high, so I've got to wrap this up. So. Um, I'm going to show you what I come up with, but honestly, I'm going to put you down because I've got about, I don't know, a minute left and I really want to make a photo. for me has kind of felt like part nightmare part dream come true and today what is a dream come true I'm in a t-shirt at the start of November how awesome is that I'm taking pictures on a beach at the start of November how cool is that 
I have an office studio. How cool is that? And this DIY project, this building of this studio has almost been like a little bit of escapism for me. And it's just been really nice to dive right into something. I just feel more empowered. I feel more passionate. I feel more excited. I feel good again. So this has been amazing for me and I hope you guys aren't bored with it so far. I'll be back at it again tomorrow though. There'll be, yeah, another video. See you there. Peace.